I was thinking about what I wanted to say. Yeah, I'm still thinking, hold on. Okay. Hey everybody, my name is Katrina Kane. I'm a vocalist and songwriter. And I'm Jacob from Perfect Circuit, and today I've put together a Eurorack system for processing vocals. I'm gonna sing, and we're both gonna experiment and see what it's like to process vocals through modular synths. So in putting this system together, I made sure to grab some effects modules that I thought would be particularly cool for processing vocals. Um, but alongside those, I made sure to add in some more synthesizer-specific things to supplement those in an interesting way. So obviously, you need to have some kind of easy, convenient way to bring a microphone into your world of modular patch cables. For this particular system, I threw in the JOR Analog Receive 2. Um, this module is super handy for this purpose because it has those XLR quarter inch combo jack inputs. Alternatively, you could use something like the Expert Sleeper's Little Mikey, and that one's super cool because it has phantom power. So if you're in a studio environment, you could use a condenser mic or something like that. So one of the first things in our collection of effects here is I actually have a comparator that I'm using to follow the pitch of Katrina's vocals. So here's what it sounds like with the vocals totally dry. And now we're going to blend in the comparator and you can see that it actually generates a square wave that follows the pitch of whatever notes Katrina is singing. This particular comparator is super cool because it has a divider in it. So in our audio pitch tracking patch that we've got going here, we can actually generate different sub octaves or harmonies below the fundamental pitch. Kind of crossfading between the dry vocal and the synthesized comparator voice as well. And then from there, everything is getting split off and going into some of the other effects that I have going here. One of the effects that I made sure to include in this system is the verbose multi delay, which is a super cool multi tap delay. That was definitely my favorite effect to sing through because uh, it it does such beautiful lines so well, but the ability to yeah. to have um, a more rhythmic sound is is really cool. So when I'm singing a line, you're able to control um, parameters from there mm -hmm. as well, like live. Yeah. Yeah, so like one thing that I typically do is like a performative gesture when I'm like working with someone like you um, is I'll control like, like the feedback and things mm -hmm. like that and kind of blend in like swells of like, like recirculating lines and things like that as sort of like accompaniment to whatever's going on. So one of the other big modules I threw in here was the Rainmaker from IntelliGel. Now at first glance, this might seem like a bit of an overlap with what the multi-delay can do because the Rainmaker is also kind of a multi-tap delay situation. But the Rainmaker also has comb filters built in, it has granular pitch shifting, and can just do a whole bunch of like other weird stuff that make it kind of a more versatile complement to just what the multi-delay can do by itself. So of course, uh, this video is Katrina and I's 
first time performing together, um, if we had more time to rehearse and kind of like prepare and maybe do a show or something, um, I might dive in and do my own like presets and configurations on the Rainmaker. But the advantage of this module is that it comes with a whole bunch of really good factory presets right out of the box. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. So one of the other more kind of strange things I have going on here is I have the noise and filter from Verbos that is a noise source and a fixed filter bank with four separate outputs for different frequency bands. Now one thing that I kind of like to do with a module like this is have some kind of way to blend and crossfade between all of those different bands so you get this kind of sort of spectral morphing kind of thing going on. And the Noise Lab Forecaster just so happens to be a four channel scanner crossfader situation. So, as I turn this knob up here that's scanning through the different channels, it'll blend different bands in and out to isolate different parts of uh, the notes that Katrina is singing. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the effects and the marbles and maths that I have in here to kind of add in random modulations and shaping voltages that are circulating within the system, I did kind of want to give Katrina a way to interact with what's going on. So to connect everything together, I'm using the Dopefer A180-9, which is their multi-core module. It allows us to, instead of have all these patch cables draped between both of these little systems, I can condense them down to two network cables, which is super handy for keeping things nice and tidy. Probably one of the most important modules over here is the Tetrapad from IntelliGel. We're using this module as a sort of mixing control surface situation, so Katrina has the ability to blend in her dry voice or any of the effects at any given moment depending on what she's feeling for the particular phrase or vocals that she's singing. Beyond that, we've also got the Planar 2 from IntelliGel, which serves as a nice joystick-based macro control that I can patch in and give Katrina some way to interact with several different effects at once without necessarily having to worry about the specifics of what she's doing, because the most important thing is obviously the vocals and you know making sure those come through strongly. In addition to that, I've got a big honking button from Winterbloom and a Wobla from SSR Labs. And what we're using with those is actually a pair of 2HP loop modules. Those exist at the very end of the chain after all the effects and mixing and everything going on. So if Katrina has an idea that she likes with effects and things going on, she can capture that as a continuous loop and she can blend in and out between those with the Wobla. I loved having this controller and I found it was actually, it was really intuitive to use despite this being my very first time seeing it, my very first time experimenting with it. Um, I think like it could be cool to just sing random things and have someone else control it, but it's harder to know the path of the song or the, you know, the, the music composition mm -hmm. that you're you're creating together. So having this was very much like, we're a duet, but I, but I do have control over the effects themselves mm -hmm. a little bit. I, I like this a lot. Yeah, you, especially with like being able to control the levels of things. Like if you decided you just blatantly did not like what I was yeah. doing, you could just like cut it out entirely. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> this is fun. I would like to buy one. <laughs> Well, one thing I was really excited about hearing was processing the voice as a synth. 
um, more rather than just adding effects to a dry mm -hmm. voice. And so I was super interested in how that would sound. Um, and it's cool because you, it, it feels like there's more room to play because you don't really have to think about words. You barely have to think about syllables um, because the change from like, is so minimal. I just sang E, A, O, U. And it, it was so minimal actually. But that's really cool because you can really think about your pitches, um, how out you wanna be or how within the key you wanna be. And it actually gives a lot of freedom to remove some of the parameters of being a vocalist. Mm -hmm. Of course, like as a vocalist, we always love to be able to have these like swimmy effects. And we had talked about that like, I just love lines like that and that's how I tend to write songs and that's how I tend to sing. Mm -hmm. So being able to play more with that was was really, really great. And I also find that this is really, really, um, it feels more stable and precise than singing through guitar pedals sometimes. And I don't know why, maybe that's just my perception right now, um, but it just felt like real, like really easy to lean on in a way and really easy to explore within it rather than um, worrying about going out of key or you know like too too loud or too like it was it was really easy to just um, just sing straight ahead and then just play within like that world. You know with especially with like vocals you know we often I think especially in our day and age where we have the perception of like the vocalist mm -hmm. is like you know the kind of like carrying the melody and like mm -hmm. they have like a backing band or something like that but when you're able to kind of use the vocals to generate textures on their own that's kind of a really cool interesting thing to do yeah yeah U using using vocals as an instrument is is more people need to do this like people need to do more of that within bands rather than just having like the lead vocalist out front and of course that's a that's a preference and also largely um a genre thing yeah. but it just, there's so much creativity in there and so much opportunity to explore, you know? Mm -hmm. having me out and playing with me. This was so much fun. Thank you for watching. Um, you can follow me at Katrina Kane Music on Instagram and TikTok. Yeah, and hopefully this video kind of gave you some interesting ideas for you to process vocals or other instruments in your own Eurorack synthesizer.